Because we're bringing the keyboard. That's how much we can do. Yeah. Pardon? Well, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Girls, it's very special. I, I really hope you all enjoy it, especially the pleasure of Sheila Brude and all the assembled Vaishnavas. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once upon a time, Sri Krishna was deeply thinking of Srimati Radharani. He was feeling such acute pangs of separation from her that he fainted and was completely unconscious. Then, as if by providential arrangement, Narada Rishi and Uddhava came there and saw Sri Krishna lying unconscious. Knowing everything, they could understand that the cause of his condition was separation from Srimati Radharani. Oh, Narada, we must do something. Our dear Lord Krishna is unconscious due to deep separation from the gopis. Especially <coughs> Srimati Radharani, whom we cannot live without. We must do something as quickly. What shall we do? Krishna. Krishna. Oh, here's Balaram. Krishna, what has happened? I understand. He's feeling such great pains of separation from his beloved Radharani. We must do something quickly. Yes, but what? I have an idea. What is it? Please listen. If you were to sing the glories of God alone, then Lord Krishna will regain his consciousness and wake up. Yes, this is a wonderful idea, Narada. Please oh. yes, help us. Certainly, I will do anything that you ask, but I do have one apprehension. Don't you see? Our dear Lord has become mad due to separation. When he awakes, Immediately, he will not wait for anything. Immediately, he will run to Braj. So we must prepare a chariot. Yes, you are right. I will tell Daruka to have his chariot ready. You are right. But as far as I have understood, the condition in Bhumi is such that if Krishna goes there now and hears the piteous crying of the gopis, and the branch buses. He will not be able to tolerate it. <coughs> then the, the situation will be more precarious. We might not get Krishna back. Well, my dear Uddhava, you are Krishna's very good messenger, and you are Krishna's dear friend. Perhaps you should go to Braj first. I unconditionally accept whatever you may say. When such elevated Vaishnava devotees are requesting you, how can I refuse? But there's one thing. You may already know this. My dear friend, Lord Krishna, once sent me to Braj Bhumi from Mathura. So I went there as a messenger and stayed for three months. I had gone there to give some consolation to Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda Mata, the gopis, and Srimati Radharani. <coughs> They are feeling the acute pang of separation from Krishna. My language failed. My mission failed. They are crying for Krishna. 
Krishna, day and night, 24 hours. If someone here in the material world loses his near one and dear one, he cries day and night. Nobody cries for Krishna. So then one may say, why are you crying? Everything in this material world is temporary. One who is born must die someday. Death is certain. No one can check it. They are crying for Krishna. And if someone is crying for Krishna, who is the object of love, how can you say, don't cry? Rather, my heart says, cry more, cry more, cry more. Therefore, my mission failed. I could not give them any consolation. At last, I told them, I will go back to Mathura and try my best to send Krishna back to Vrajvuni immediately. I have given my word to them. But until now, it has not taken place. So after so many months and years, if I go back to Vrajvuni and speak like this, they will not put any faith in my words. Rather, they will scold me like a cheater. No, Dava, you are a liar. You promised us this before. But Krishna did not come back. So how can I go? My dear friend Uddhava, I am considering what you are saying. And I agree. Father Ramji, perhaps it is better that you should go to Braj Bhumi first. Oh, Narda. I would have gone to Braj Bhumi long ago. I would not have waited for anyone. But please consider this. Your Lord Krishna always said, yes, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. But he was not actually going. He was only procrastinating. I have been to Braj Bhumi, and I have seen the condition of the Rajbasis. I was there for two months, and I also was unable to console them. I tried to tell them, please, have patience. Krishna will return soon. Do not feel so much distress. But their condition is like a fish out of water. I understood clearly that without the presence of Krishna, nothing would give them consolation. They cannot survive at all. It is although they are dying, feeling the pangs of separation from Krishna, and yet he has not gone there. Krishna's presence would be a soothing balm to them. They would give back their lives, especially a Shodama. She is always crying when I went to Raj Bhumi. I touched her lotus feet and I said, Oh, Mother, as soon as I return to Raj Bhumi, as soon as I return to Dwarka, I will make my best effort to send Krishna to Raj Bhumi. Please, wait for some days, Mother. I gave my word to Mother Yashoda. But what happened? <coughs> so many times I requested, my dear brother Krishna, please go to Raj Bhumi immediately. Suspend everything. Give up all your work here and go to Raj Bhumi. Otherwise, they will all die. So many times I requested, Krishna, please make them survive. Your presence would be a soothing balm, the medicine to save their lives. If you do not go, their lives shall surely get out. So many
many times I asked this previously. Whatever request I made, Krishna would carry out immediately. But he has not carried out this request. He <coughs> simply says, yes, I'll go, I'll go. Oh, Harda, you are all knowing. So please tell me, if I were to go to Brad Fumi, what would I tell Mother Yashoda? I have already promised her that Krishna would return. So what shall I say? Will Mother Yashoda put faith in my words? She will never. Rather, she would say, Balaram, you are a liar. Alas, my dear Rajvasis, are you still surviving? My dear Brother Krishna, your heart is as soft as butter. How strange it is that such a soft heart has become as hard as a block of stone. All of you, please be patient and give up your anxiety. I will go to Raj. I'll first go and sit on the lap of Mother Yashoda. Wiping the tears from her eyes, I'll say, Oh, Mother, Krishna is coming just now. My two brothers and I started from Dorka simultaneously. For long the road, many people have assembled to greet him. They've constructed big gates, so many kings are standing at the roadside. Innumerable people are carrying artifacts just to offer puja to Krishna. So he is coming a bit later. But I have come in advance just to give you this good news. He's coming. Krishna is coming. <laughs> Similarly, I will go to each gopi, wipe the tears from their eyes, and console them. I'll tell them, male persons are a little crippled, but we, females, are very simple. I'm a woman, so when they hear from me that Krishna is coming, they'll believe me and then all the Raj will become so happy and make arrangements for a great festival to welcome you. Yes, this is a wonderful proposal. Yes, this is a wonderful idea. Uh, yes, uh, let us proceed at once. Oh, but how can I allow uh, my dear uh, brother and sister okay. to go alone? No, uh, Subhadra is going first. I will accompany her. Yes. You should both go. After your departure, Narada Muni will sing Raja Lila Kahani with his Veena. And Lord Krishna will wake up and we will send him immediately. Oh my dear beautiful Lord, please come back to us soon. Thank you so much. 
difficulty, Narada and Uddhava caught hold of Krishna and placed him on the chariot. Then Narada ordered Daruka to drive the chariot to Braja, and Daruka drove as swiftly as the wind. In the meantime, Baladev's chariot and Subhadra's chariot had reached Rajabhumi. When Balaram saw the Brajvasi's condition, an ecstatic mood manifested in his body. Then the same transformation also took place in Subhadra, and she could not go to Yashodamata because she had become completely ecstatic. It was as if these two forms were drowning in that ocean of sweetness of the mellow of Raja. Meanwhile, at Radha's kunj in Nidhuvan, her condition was gradually becoming worse. All her sakis were doubtful whether or not there was any life in the body of Radharani. She was lying there with her head resting on the palm of Lalita's hands. Her sakis were all sitting around her. They could not understand what to do. Radharani was giving up her body. She could not survive. The whole of Rajabhumi was in complete anxiety. I used to say that. I have tried my 
best to prove that you are a great prostitute, and that you have no chastity at all. Although you are married to my brother, you were always running to Krishna, and so I tried my best to prove that you are most unchaste, and that I am most chaste. But once, a very mysterious thing happened. Krishna manifested Leela as if deathly ill with a terrible fever. This fever had come and all the Vajrasis were in great anxiety. How could Krishna be cured? What was the medicine? Of all the Vajrasis, we were told that only a lady who was very chaste and pure could bring the medicine. If such a lady could go to the Jamuna, carrying a pot that had a hundred holes, and bring back water without spilling a single drop, that would be the medicine to cure Krishna. All the Vajrasis decided that I was the most chaste lady. They said, Kutil is always beating drums and proclaiming that she is the only chaste lady. There are no other chaste ladies in Rajmuli. So they said, call Kutila. Let her bring water from the Jamuna without spilling a single drop. They gave the pot to Kutila. What am I trying to do it? All the water falls. That proved that I was not chased at all. My pride was completely crushed. All right. Then my sister-in-law, Srimati Radhika, was called. They gave the patch of water running.
you can have your body. No one in this batch will survive. Or oh, rather, right, hey, not a single animal. Everyone will die. Think Krishna. Krishna will never come back. We will never see Krishna again. Please, please, Radhe. Don't die. Please. they have descended to come. And now I'm seeing that very far away from Vrindavan, lakhs and lakhs smiles opposite in this world from Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, that is Vrindavan and opposite to the other world, there is 
perhaps morning, morning four, four or five, and here he is now like this. But even there is no culture like Indian culture. But by the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and his associates, this very rare and highest mode of Vrindavan Braj eh, now descended in new Braj. Mm. I think the mission of Siddha Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Thakur Bhakti Vinod Thakur and the mission of Sri uh, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Miharaj and my Guru in now successful. That even rare, but you are one of the rares, the devotees and Braja. So try to keep these things forever in your life and eternal end of life. Don't deviate from this life. I'm praying also Radha Krishna conjugal. Jogmaya. Uddha. Narada also. That they should sprinkle their mercy. Without their help, without their mercy, anyone cannot have this rare mood. This mood also narrow minds, <coughs> but he has not that said. Whether he has become dust or not dust in Vrindavan, Uddha, Narada also, we don't know. Anywhere in Shastri is not written. But you are so fortunate to have this rare mood in you. So try to keep it here safe, very safe, and so that gradually it will come develop. So my heart will blessings to you. Also my mission is also <coughs> successful, that you are inspired to play a drama like this. I think in world, anywhere, we will not find a drama like this. Uh, <laughs> Request all the devotees of New Braja. Hmm? Then they should leave Brother Hartley, that we are all, all in God family. Hmm? And try to develop all these things. You will never see in, have anywhere in, you will go to India, in Haridwar, in South India. Hmm? You will go to Kashi, you will not find all these. Anywhere in the world. This so I want that. <coughs> These things to be protected and try to develop. I want that they should all be together and they should, in one week or two weeks, they should assemble anywhere, <coughs> discuss all these things as a broad, yeah, broad brotherhood. Hmm? Like we are brother and sister, <clears throat> and thus we should try to develop all these things. And I think very soon, very soon, Krishna will be merciful, Mahaprabhu will be merciful to take you all in prayer. So I request all that they should, I also want that there should be a school here. Hmm? So that children may be educated <coughs> in this line. So I am requesting and praying you all that you should assemble, make a uh, samiti means society. society, and go on with this. This is the best way to follow or to um, to develop or to fulfill. The inner desire of your Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Mahaprabhu and Bhavar. And by doing this, you will be very so happy. I want that there should be no friction. Have tolerance and try to each other helping in Krishna consciousness. And so much. Uh, indebted to these girls, being the girls, 
teeny age or little boys. And how they knew this mood of pressure? Very rare. So you should keep these notes in your heart and try to develop Krishna consciousness. Gaur Prima. Hey. 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 Hey.